Super excited she's here. In addition to having one of my favorite accents on the planet, she is also the mother of three beautiful children, a teacher's assistant in a self-contained classroom, a widow, uh, which has now led her to find her really incredible fiance, Dave, Leslie Wade. Hello. And I was almost going to do my American accent just so. Do it. Go ahead. <laughs> Fuck shit up. Go ahead. Do no, I just pretend accent. the Irish is just the whole. It's your up. whole, whole made up thing. Whole thing. Born in Brooklyn. <laughs> Born in Brooklyn? No, please, please. I'd like everyone I to hear. I think I've heard my American accent before. Every show I do. Every do you show have that I many do. fans that you think? Oh yeah, people, absolutely. Yeah. People Any calling. show I think I've ever done in in New York has been an American accent. That's true. Like to the point where people said to me, "You're auditioning for that? You know, it's American." I'm like, you know, I'm an actress. Are you? A little bit. A little bit. You're all right. You're pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I so before we get into like the Big Mom Three, sometimes just for fun. Um, I like to Google people just to see what comes up. Okay. Do you know that the first thing that comes up on a Google search for you is some woman named Leslie Wade who embezzled millions of dollars and is um, on like trial to spend almost 20 years in jail. Is it you? Found. Found. Helicopters are coming. I thought you were going to say because there is a professor of drama, I think, at Rada, whose name is Leslie Wade. And I was like, Leslie Wade, me. something else. Yeah. To the point that I was like, I know Leslie a long time. This can't be the same person. Let me pick her as opposed to the other one. Can I be her? Just be yourself. <laughs> um, let's go into the Big Mom 3 and then we'll talk about all of the fun stuff okay. about you. So first question, Big Mom 3. Yes. Uh, did you always know that you wanted to be a mom? Yes. Can I say yes, that? Yes, yes, no, period. It's so weird because when you, you had asked that on your other podcast. Or so you're a fan. Yes. I've watched. Um, and I'm like, was there ever a moment? There really wasn't. To the point that it was ridiculous. From when I was tiny, I would have my little brother in the stroller. Yeah. Like the, 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 you know, the baby pram for my dolls. I would have him squished into that, pretending I was his mom. And then I would like see my friends and let him go rolling off, <laughs> forgetting I'm not a mom and I'm not obviously responsible. And then I was not allowed to do that anymore. And then when I got older, I remember asking Santa for another pram, we call them in Ireland. Pram, yeah. And um, I wanted another bigger one. And my mom was like, you're, why do you want that? You're too old for that at this age. And I'm like, because I, I like pushing it around the streets. So the dog went into it oh, no. for years. Okay. So I know <laughs> there was always the thing of, I love pushing the baby around in a pram. On the uh, on the honest side of it, I came up against career, acting, mom, and I always went back to the mom. I always went back it to was mom. always like deep rooted in me. Yeah. Give me the um, I know the breakdown of your children, but give me give me the the breakdown of, of your kids. So my eldest is twenty two. <laughs> yeah, uh, Troy, uh, Hannah, my middle child is twenty. Can you believe? Because you know her since she was. I know, since and she's real Dylan though, yeah. uh, is just turned 18. So I have no oh. children anymore. You're like, like a, you're like a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Done. I hope they watch this and they're like, oh, yeah, no. God. No, they wouldn't watch it. They never watch anything they do. <laughs> Maybe they'll watch this. Maybe Hannah will be like, oh, uh, no, actually Hannah would. Hannah would. Hannah would. The, the other two would be like, nah, your plays are boring. Yeah, people just, you know. Well, you and I always got roped into doing boring plays. Yeah. So that yeah, people's, yeah, out. people's murder mysteries as far as they're concerned. Yeah, if I ever hear one more, I get the prestige yeah. play in my life. Yeah, I'm gonna thank kill you. Myself. Thank you. Um, big mom question number two, which you're a pretty shady person who likes to stand up for themselves. So I am. She. She. <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, what is the shittiest or like most backhanded piece of advice you've ever gotten from another parent? And like, as a widow, I'd imagine many people had a lot of shit to say to you. Oh yeah. I have so many pieces of shitty advice, I'm surprised I'm still here. Um, <laughs> bear in mind, my older two were born in Los Angeles. Right. So, right. I, Not here. I started out my motherhood in LA. Different. Which is different. 
which is very, very different. And I'm not knocking LA, but it was very different to what I was used to seeing in Ireland. And I was that like hands-on auntie and godmother and babysitter. Yeah. So it was really, really different for me. And with Troy, my eldest, he very, very cute baby, like huge big eyes and eyelashes. And like he was the kid that I somebody stopped me in the supermarket and said, oh, he needs to be in ads and literally sent us to an audition for Macy's. Oh, really? Kind of yeah. So it was like, I always felt, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I better do that or I'm like being rude to America. You know, somebody being asked about it to go America. Like, America's rude to itself, don't But worry. it was that sort of like invasive, you're standing in the supermarket and people just come up to you and speak to you. And, and, and as nice as it was to be complimented on your kid, I remember just being told you need to put him into modeling and you need to, and if you don't, you're failing. Like it was just, that was the first thing. What a weird, what a weird thing to want for someone else's kid. Be almost like, you know, it was, it was my job to make sure that that's the path we went just because they cute eyes. Like it was, and of course the first time you went and thankfully Larry, my husband, um, he brought him to the actual filming and of course I had sent him a puppets and all because I used to teach drama and I was like, you know, we can do this in the background and get him, you know, he'll react and I get a call a half an hour he's like, oh, fast, fuck this, we're done. And I'm like, what? He said, he doesn't care. He said, he's looking at all of, you know, the, the things beyond, he said, we're not doing this, like, what are we doing this for? And I'm like, you know what, you're right, that's, you know. No. That, it, that it's, a, it's, a, it's more work than it's worth. Like, the kids don't give a I shit. Yeah, and the, the the crew don't really care. No, I, I mean, it's getting your job done, you're getting your ad done or whatever. And then I remember, like, a couple of weeks after that, and I was like, okay, that was sort of like a little, you know, dust with fame. Somebody coming up to me in the supermarket and handed me his socks. Like, he's tiny on my, and I said, oh, what? The, what? And she said, oh, I, I took them off his feet, they're too tight. What? They touched your kid? They took the socks off, and of course I had him here, so I was, you know, doing whatever with my other hand. And she came around the inside. She said, "They're the size. She said, they're, they're way too tight." And I, I was like, "Are you?" Oh, it was. I, did you speak up or did you just say? Oh, of course I did. I was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I, I, I have a lot of people that have been on that. I'm like, "Oh, did you say anything?" And they're like, "No, no, no I just always, let it go." Always, 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 always. Good. Um, and then I moved back to Ireland, so it was like a little different. Where I'm like, "Oh, everybody here is going to be so nice." <laughs> Not true. And I was a a breastfeeding mother. You know, I had Hannah at that point, and I remember like everybody. You know, you need your own life now. You've had, you have the older one, and now you. Do, do, does Katie get that? Katie gets a lot of like, well, when are you gonna stop? Yeah, and like, we're like, your own when life. she's ready, like when Lily is ready. I actually had somebody, and I will not call the person out, but Katie talked about she's gonna be. She's you know, you'll watch this episode probably before that, and uh, she'll be on. And she talks about, uh, somebody said to us, like, well, you can't breastfeed her till college. Like, no, shit, are you sure? Oh, I didn't know that. Like, I didn't, I've never seen, like, a full girl, like, has Troy ever walked up to you and be like, hey, mom, real quick? Yeah. Like, I'm thirsty. Yeah. Could you? No. Could you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, people are stupid. They don't, you know, nobody thinks before they speak. But I think they do, but they just That's are. That's even worse. <laughs> they are, they're bitches. It's they really like, are. I was, I've never, ever asked for an opinion on that. So I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm doing what I feel is right. I don't need you to be telling me. You know, I was told like, oh, you're too thin to breastfeed. You know, you're obviously not putting on weight and you're not looking after your own nutrition. You know, you're obviously running around and you're, um, right. but that was the, the oh, you, you know, you need to live your whole life now. I'm like, you know, this is kind of my life right now and I chose it. <laughs> well, well uh, you know, I'm not like, <laughs> that's something that drives me nuts. People are like, wow, you know, you lose yourself you lose your life like no it becomes an extension of your life and like this is just where you are in that extension it's of your life forever, at that time. as you said it's the, the moment no. and you go with it and i wanted to go with it it wasn't nobody forced me i was like well they didn't like it no no nobody likes to be told that if they didn't do something right they, when people say like well it's what worked for us and then they yeah. give you that like knowing look yeah. like it should also be working for you yes we know best right we know best we have a kid that's a month older than your kid so yeah, yeah. we know best um, well, well said. And those were, those, those line up with what I was hoping for. So mm -hmm. thank you. Um, big mom question number three. What is, um, and you just told me some little puppetry, but whatever you want, what is a, a special skill or superpower that you had before becoming a mom that you think has really helped you as a mom? I think 
I, there's, a, there's a few, and I mean, I had a phenomenal drama in Ireland as part of the curriculum. It's on, it pisses yeah. me off that it's not here. It should be. Um, but the drama teacher I had in school, she had always this phrase, you have to be firm but fair. And I always followed through. Like if I was, if the kids were doing something and I was going to threaten them with, you know, in the back of my head, like, don't, don't say they're not going to the birthday party because then you can't go get your nails done. <laughs> like, just like, be really careful what you pick as the, you know, the thread. <laughs> sure. Because I always, like, if I say, okay, if you don't, you know, stop throwing your toys around or put a tidy up or whatever nonsense it was, you know, you're not getting ice cream or whatever. Like, I didn't give it. I never, I never Good. gave in. And it stood because I was like, if you, if you don't stick to that, they, you know, they're, they're playing you. And, and of course, my best experience of that was in LA when I went into a Disney store with Troy and there was a kid having an absolute meltdown in the middle of the floor. Right, the kid out of it. like it's embarrassing for the kid it's embarrassing for you right you know nobody's coming out of this well and the mother was lying I know you're upset now I know this is not what you expected when we came in but you can't just go and take it to, you know she was having a whole therapy oh, session yeah. and said okay go get the, the toy the kid then had another meltdown it was, and it just kept going on and on I'm like this there's nobody learning from this no. whole production that you're both embarrassing yourself if I go we can just get the kid out and come back tomorrow <laughs> but yeah that was always my thing like you know if I if I if I'm firm and I'm fair hopefully they'll pick up on that and know when to ask or when to fight it or when yeah. to like Hannah used to write me letters <laughs> over the years where she was like I know you're going to say no <laughs> but could I please just give you my side and I you know I'd sit with her and I'd say listen you know what you're right. This this could be okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for asking. But you have like you have good kids too. Like they're like smart, kind human beings. Like you don't have shitty kids, and it's probably Thank because you. of that. You don't. I mean, I'm sure some days you're like my kids suck, and they definitely go through. You know, yeah. I mean, Generally speaking, you have very nice kids, and like you've always had. Uh, so my my wife taught Hannah, mm. um, and like just like the most respectful lovely oh, little you. person she was yeah. i mean i don't know what she's doing no, now she is she's great she is great. no she's like, a, she is still that person still that way yeah. but i'd imagine a lot of that comes from like a mom that they really couldn't fuck with too much yeah and i think and not that i was like i i think being a single parent it was always i was always the bad cop like they never really right. saw and i've said i still say it i'm still battling with the younger one I'm like i'm i'm never going to look like the good cop because you're not you know you haven't got that other person to run to to say you know, well, ask your mom and then I give in. I said, it's it's always me and you only oh, remember that. the shit stuff. And it's like, you should always say no. But I've, over the years, I find no matter what, just keep doing the same thing. Like I've always just said, I'm gonna keep throwing the same stuff at them and something will stick. Yeah. And finally, and my older one, who went through like a really rebellious couple of years and he now will say to me, oh my God, it, at the back of my mind, it's always, you know, do this, this, and this, yeah. and, and be respectful, and look people in the eyes, and yeah, whatever. You All the stuff you think it's, yeah. you know, stupid parenting nonsense, but it's it's fundamentals in life. And I think if you keep just throwing it out here and there, they don't always listen. But I think it's filtering. It's it, yeah, they, they get it, they get it. But it uh, doesn't mean they're going to be charmers. <laughs> no, not, not everybody's <laughs> half as charming as we are. No. Um, speaking of charming, you came to my home today and, and bought me a present that I am. Well, I, I felt like it was about. going on, you know, the um, Jimmy <laughs> Fallon or something. Like, I'm shocked you didn't go with I Ellen. I have that? a. No. Okay. Would not be going on Ellen. Um, <laughs> I was hoping I'd have you a mug of, mug of something. And then I'm like, oh, maybe she'll do the Graham Norton and I'll have oh, a big old glass of wine. You should have said, yeah, I have yeah. my own personal yeah. seltzer. Well, I've, I've, I've offered you. Somewhere. I've yeah. offered you nothing. So I brought um, you a gift. You bought me a gift that actually, funny enough, I have been saying I want this for a long time and just have never gotten it. Um, it's the go the fuck to sleep. That's well, the best advice ever. Go the fuck to sleep. My kid sleeps. At some point, she won't. So this is great. Uh, well, she I, might be sleeping because you've said that to her on day one. Go the fuck to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to start doing dramatic readings. You should, yeah, I was just going to say you should do a little nighttime reading for parents. I, I love a I love a prop. I love a dramatic yeah. reading. Yeah, she's she really has the full experience. Does she really sleep through the whole night? She really sleeps through the whole night and has since she like. You see, I couldn't have even done this when I was parenting. I I would have had fucked next. Time. Well, we keep saying she's either going to be a terrible toddler, a terrible teenager, which is what I deserve. Right. Um, yeah. He doesn't deserve Karma's, it. I yeah. deserve it. Karma sucks. 
um, or our like next baby and then shops close, um, next baby will be a terror. Yeah, you can't, you can't be right. It's not gonna, yeah. yeah. We don't Sorry. have the luck of the Irish in the same way you do. We have I half, didn't even get we the luck of the Irish. That's true, you have all kinds of shit going on. But we certainly get the luck of the Jewish, so. Okay, fair you enough, know, please. We've been enslaved for a long time. Um, Speaking of luck of the Irish, I, I was talking to you before this, and you're like, oh, God, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm going to ask you anyway, because I think you're going to come up with something good. Okay. And then we'll no jump No pressure, today, for God's sake. Well, you did text me and say, like, what makes you think I'm Irish or funny? And I was like, well, if you're not, this will be the lost yeah, episode. That's so the end. you better stand up. We'll see. Okay. Not, like, physically. I just mean, like, comically. Okay. okay. Um, before we get into, like, parenting stuff, I, I have to ask, given the, the world, what is something that blows your mind as, as you know, Ireland-born that Americans do that's either just, like, so weird or so strange that would just literally never happen in Ireland? There's... And the answer can't be this show. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, we... I, have, I mean, the, the, there's so many things. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. And I live here, and I love it, and I chose to live here, so that's... That's my big. You've given a good preface. Yes, I padded. You know, I you made the, the choice audience. to live here. And I'm yes. very lucky to live here, and my kids are very lucky to live here. I just find there's a lot of rudeness. <laughs> that, like, you know, it, is that sound like just so basic though? It's no, just, it doesn't. It's it's the rudeness of in, and it could be just where I'm living and the. the present circumstances like the entitlement you just you, you would not see that in Ireland like everybody genuinely would be out for each other and let's you know like I when I go back to Ireland and I go into a store and or if like they would come with the kids even now and you know hi how are you how can I help you today and oh, I really I'm enjoying the sunshine isn't it lovely oh they're great and then when Here, I'm no. You go into, you know, I went in for a checkup last week, and I said, I'm here for a checkup, and this is, you're not here for both. I'm like, no, I am. You're not, because we don't, the way we bill it. I said, well, that's what I requested when I made the appointment. Well, we definitely wouldn't have, I said, are you, are you telling me I'm not, and like, I was like, well, why were you being so rude? And I actually said to her, I said, why are you so rude? She ended up being rude. I said, you actually are, so maybe think about that for future reference when you're dealing with customers. That kind of thing, I'm like, you would never, and drivers here. We're terrible drivers. The we are really bad. We're very aggressive drivers. But just the lack of, and a very nice actor friend of mine told me her brother, who's obnoxious, I'm not even gonna mention names, when he drives, he doesn't bother using, we call them your indicators, you call them your- Oh, our, our blinkers. Your blinkers, or our, yeah. Doesn't bother using, because he said, it's not, nobody's fucking business where I'm going. <laughs> That should be on a Trump flag somewhere. I'm like, how? It's nobody's fucking business nobody's where I'm going. Nobody's fucking business if I go that direction. Michael, you see that? That's different. That's okay. So that's not something that would happen no. uh, where you're from. That's okay. not something. Um, I mean, the drinking they are here <laughs> is, is very different. And I think everybody thinks Irish people are alcoholics and we're all it's a very different social environment and I'm always yeah. very you know if I go out and I'll ask for a glass of wine and then I feel like there's you know if I need nobody else drinking I'm saying oh my god we all judging me it's it doesn't mean you're going to drink your head off and you're, you're throwing back yeah. a bottle of vodka in Ireland everything circles around going to a, you know a, now when I was younger you yeah. went to a bar on a Thursday night and you just hung out and you chatted and in the old days it was like that's where the supermarket was and that's where the post office was people had this Whole thing of like drinking is drinking in Ireland. It's a social thing. It's right. not. It's not a oh, we're you know drinking our heads off to get drunk and puke or whatever. No, I that's find here. That, that's, that's what here. I was about yeah. to say. Like I find here, if I go somewhere, like, oh my gosh, you're drinking. Yes, I can have a drink and chat to you. I'm not going. Right, I'm not going to throw up on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Passing out. You know, it's those are good. Those mm -hmm. okay. Am I, am I passing the test? You passed the test. You haven't. Okay. I don't think you've offended a single person. Okay. So very good. Um, so I want to talk about, you know, you, you lost your husband when your kids were much younger. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't even know how to phrase it. Like, like, I can't even fathom that, right? Like, what a what a terrible experience and what a, a, a strange road you probably had till this point. Obviously, you're engaged and you've met mm -hmm. this lovely person, Dave, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him um, in Disney, actually. <laughs> I think you had just had your foot rolled over. Yeah, right? with somebody in who shouldn't have been in one of the 
Right, you were like screaming and yelling. Yeah, we yeah, ran into yeah. each other like in Magic Kingdom before fireworks, and Leslie's like, and this motherfucker ran over my foot. Da 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 da. And welcome to Disney. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> if you did shout, welcome to Disney. Um, but so you know, I've met him. But I- I'm very curious. You know, like, I've had single parents on the show before. I've never had somebody who lost a partner. It's mm-hmm. a different experience. The person is is not in existence yes. two towns over, and you're fighting a custody battle. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that like? And of course, it's it's different when you know you're here and your entire family, his family too. He was Irish. Right. Um, I did, oh, you know what? I didn't realize that. Yeah. I didn't realize he was yeah. Irish as well. So we had lived in LA. We moved to LA the day after we got married. So we were there, and we moved back to Ireland for two years. He worked for like a, um, a software company. Okay. I hated LA, so it was never really. Plus, I had you know Troy and Hannah there, so they were very young, and I didn't have that whole. Oh, you know, I, I thought we'd be hanging out with the grandparents, and you know, I didn't have that. It was very surreal, very LA yeah. life. Yeah. Um. So we moved back to Ireland for a little bit, and Dylan was born, and then the company asked Larry to move back to the states. So we were in Europe, and then when he passed away, his company very nicely, you know, were, you know, going to relocate me and pay for all of, you know. So it wasn't like it was just it would have been a very easy transition, and I remember just thinking, you know what. We made the choice to be here. We, you know, we thought about it. We did love raising them in America. We were yeah. very excited to be, you know, to be given this opportunity. And I'm like, the kids at this. Well, ha- Troy was eight, Hannah was six, and Dylan was four. So they were in school. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, they've they've started to now learn. This is their life, and to now this has happened and pull them out. So I don't know who said it to me. Whoever they were, thank you. They said, just give it a year. Don't do anything. Sit and I wait. I think that that's good life advice for literally. Anything thing. you do, don't you? Jump. Know? Yeah. Like I haven't had anything comparable to that happen in my mm-hmm. life. I just think in general, like take a take a pause. Yeah, you know that's great advice. Yeah, and it really was it always wrung at the every you know when I go through those times and I'm like this is sucks. They don't have this and I don't have that and I don't have you know just help. You know, yeah. you have to bring one to something like religion for Troy and Hannah to be a drama or whatever. Um, and I remember just thinking, oh hang on, and I've never ever regretted staying here ever. That's cool. Yeah. You know, for all the, the bitching out there that the, the situation we're in, well, I still love the opportunities they've had and I've had. And, you know, I miss my family. I miss having people on, on hand, but I have great friends too. You know, I have really good friends yeah. who have, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really cool. I, and I, I'm i curious just because you're a, a naturally funny person, you know, like I think you see humor in things probably in a similar way that I do and like mm-hmm. our group of friends kind of yeah. does. Like, there has to be some like levity in every everything, right? So, have you found any type of humor? You know, maybe perhaps not in losing your husband, but through the years, you know, are there things that have stood out to you that are are funny just because you were a single parent? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I used to yeah. like even you know going to the soccer games, and when Larry was live, I was like, why are there two parents here? Like, why isn't one off getting an having a nap? <laughs> You know what I mean? Staying, yeah. Like, we constantly were like, oh, you're doing that, I'm doing this. Divide and conquer was yeah. all. So I was like, why are you both here? You know, lives. Like, I used to find that just so flabbergasting. You could be doing anything in this 40 minutes and you're both sitting here watching the kids, you know? Right, as interesting as, like, Little League baseball. I know it's lovely is. and to be supportive. Yeah. But come to next week's game, switch off. You know, like, I was just. <laughs> I used to, yeah, I, honestly, like, I was like, it doesn't. And then, of course, as the single parent, I was so conscious then of every time I walked into a game and I was always late and I was always, you know, dragging somebody or leaving early or the carpools, I always was the one with the full car because, I, you know, I'm like, I gotta notch up so that I can ask oh, this one or that one. I or, see. Yeah. So it used to be like, who's in the back? Okay. All right. I know you're, I can ask your mom next week for, really, right, like, it, it became a paper. business to me. I was like, oh, pick good people who don't mind <laughs> paying back. Because people, you know, would, would just go to things by themselves, meet their husband there and the grandparents, and then I'd ask, Jane, chance you could bring Troy home after the game? Because Hannah's got, well, we're going to go to the diner for breakfast, you know, so we're not really going back to America. Ah, oh, great. Like, I also like that, you know, the, the shitty parent. I can laugh at it now, but at the time, you know, they were the same ones who were drinking their vodka out of their... That's like a whole <laughs> yeah. phenomenon that yes. I don't get, like... And you do field. me a favor, drive drive my kid now. <laughs> like right, you're getting yeah. you're getting drunk and yeah. you're taking yeah. my kid home. That's a whole underbelly that I, l- I learned about after. It's like Jesus, here I was feeling bad about myself for being late. <laughs> yeah, right. At least you're not yeah. drunk. Yeah, 
Um, here's another underbelly that I'm I'm curious about now that you've said that. Some of like the fathers where they like ooh widow single like did you get that a lot? I happen to and for any of my friends who know me they now know this about me I happen to gravitate towards men much quicker than I do women like a lot of my yeah. friends best friends are guys J always do. wear yeah always wear totally get it and um, because I hated the nonsense I hated the drama I hated all of that oh, you know it's been that um so for me I, I used to be very conscious of my girlfriends not ever thinking oh, going that to, you know that I, I was you know yes yeah hitting on their husbands or if their husband like a lot of my friends husbands were very helpful to me never in a flirtatious way just ju yeah, just, just being genuinely very friendly. very oh my god just yeah. single and you know i'll help with oh. this that and the other so i was always very conscious of them knowing and and it's an obnoxious thing to say where you say listen just so you know right i'm not hitting on your husband yeah like it, is it necessary to say that but i always thought okay it kind of is because if i don't say it i don't want them to think you know he's over fixing something for yes, he's cleaning yeah, our pipes. Yeah, yeah. So Actually, you're cleaning one of the pipes. I don't know. Okay, that could be something else. One of my friends, I remember saying to me, she had said to her husband, she used to tell the story over and over again, oh, if anything ever happened to her, marry Leslie, because she, she's, she'll survive and she'll look at, like, am I supposed to be thrilled with this? Like, oh, <laughs> Is that thanks. a compliment? Like, I'm, you know, I, you know with a scarf around my head and... <laughs> Like, oh, thank you. You wore black for yeah. 20 years. <laughs> exactly. and, you know, yeah. let all of your moles oh grow in. Oh, yeah, Mary Mary Leslie, Leslie, she'll so take nice of you. you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, and now you're engaged. Yes. How did you How did you meet Dave? Oh, I mean, you've been engaged for years. Still though. Um, I do everything on the, you know. <laughs> I met really Dave goddamn actually. Time on if I never, funnily enough, I never had any interest in dating while I was rearing my kids. And I think again, because yeah. I was very, very single with no family around. And the same thing with the theater. Like I really didn't do a lot of plays unless it was around the corner or I just didn't, I felt because I was the only parent I had to be there. I, I think you know, that, and I, I like didn't want to miss anything. Thing, and yeah. you know, it was like, back to the press when you really need to live your own life. Like I am, these are the kids, and you chose to I give them to life, so you may as well support so, it and you know, be it's, around them. It's, a, it's it's kind of like in the, the whole process of having children. It's um, in the contract, exactly. Yeah. And then a friend of mine had said to me, "You know, you should go on one of the dating sites." I'm like, mm, "Not for me." <laughs> and she's like, "Okay, well, you're not going to go to CD bars where you might pick up a guy, or where you where are you going to be right. going?" And I'm like, "I know, but it will have a show pair. Like, it's not like you're just bumping into people in the supermarket." So, bottle of wine and a bit of, you know, she put me on one of the free, free days. <laughs> I'm like, I'm paying for any shit. I'm paying for men. So, <laughs> she put me on and followed me on a few dates. I went on a few dates. Okay. So, it was like only three. Wait, she followed? She, she, fo she used to go with me. Her or her husband would sit in the car because they were like a vent and atmosphere. I'm like, I don't feel comfortable going meet the That's guy. That's a good friend. Like, yeah. That's a hell of a friend. Um, and I went on, I would say maybe three dates where they were complete assholes to the point one guy I remember meeting in, in a bar in Rockville Centre and he was like, oh, you're an actress. And I said, yeah, I mean, you know, I taught drama for years, did a lot of action. Or, hey, everybody, wait, uh, throw, throw something at her. Give her, give her some oh. temper buys. Oh. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll see you now. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going now. Um, leaving. He said, do you want me to walk your guy? I said, no, no not necessarily. I'm going to act done. my way That's out of this it. bar. Why compulsion to do that people are always like no oh just, just sing do something it. yeah do get up and do I'm something not fucking sing. you don't pay yeah. enough money to hear me sing what are you crazy <laughs> oh my god so that turned into anyway i met dave and the funny thing i was like oh, yeah, shannon do it was my friend and she's like oh come on just go here and there and i'll watch your kids or you know bobby your husband will come follow me in case um and myself and dave kind of you know text a little bit <laughs> went for arranged to meet him then i realized it was dylan's birthday party oh, and i'm wow. like i'm gonna sound like the worst parent you've ever heard of but i said i can't meet you because it's my son's birthday he's you forgot your son's birthday i'm like no no no, it's his, his birthday is doing, this is his party and he's like okay good um, he's like that's a good start he's texting so, his friends like yes yeah, she sucks okay, yeah. she sucks yeah, yeah she's forgetful or or maybe she's ditzy and she might just be put out you know <laughs> Um, so anyway, he said, do you want to meet on blah, blah, blah. I went, oh, okay. So kind of went, you know, Tuesday night. 
both of us were dragging our asses going, okay, we met. And the moment I, and I, we never spoke. So I started talking, he's like, hang on a second, do you have an accent? And I'm like, oh, oh I like, did I not mention? Like at that point I was so jaded with the whole thing. And I'm like, oh yeah, I said, is that the problem? He's like, no. He said, it's just funny. I never even heard your voice. You should have popped into your American accent and been like, yeah. Nah. Yeah, kidding. I don't. Did you like it? <laughs> kidding. <laughs> And then as it turned out, he went to the bathroom, Dina Lohan is sitting beside us. As you know, I our hometown, went to our hometown queen. Yeah. With Lindsay. Yeah. She's a bitch. So Those are she, I, she, I didn't say it, she did. They're all bitches, the whole family. Um, so I'm Echo. sitting being coy and Dave went to the bathroom and Dina sidles in beside me. She's like, Are you guys on a date? I'm like I said, oh, is it that pathetic? Is it that obvious? And she's like, well, it's very cute. And blah, blah. Steve comes back and suddenly now Dean Lohan and her friend, who's the, I think the makeup artist for the Rolling Stones or something, mm. flattered drunk and sick. And she's like, oh, she's a keeper. <laughs> and you're like, fuck you, Dean Lohan. Oh, no. What's wrong with you? Drive yourself drunk home. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So that was the first date. That was it. And we, so you, Dave, and Dean Lohan had a, had a, had a threesome. <laughs> Kind of a foursome, but that doesn't no. sound as good. Yeah. No, I, th I think the threesome is the button. Yeah. Good, good for you. That well, well played. That was the start of the beautiful romantic. Well, yeah. uh, congratulations. Thanks. Um, shifting gears a bit. Okay, okay. Um, So you have three three kids. Actually, you know what I want to ask you? Dave has, Dave has children? Three. Brady Bunch. That's right. Bef forget my question. Let me... How's that? So are you, you're, now you're moving into a house. You're sort of like fully blending your, yes. your families. Yeah. Does he have children at home or are they? He has out? one at home, two in college. Two in college. Yeah. So the one at home is the only one really who's going to have a, a, a bit of this. An adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she'll be fine. Um, the other two, hopefully, <laughs> will be at college. The eldest one is now doing her student teaching. She's music. Um, oh. So she's hopefully going to get into a job. And Okay. And I'm hoping my older boy will get into a job. How do they all get along? The they get along very well in the sense that like they're like cousins almost. Sure. They're not. That makes sense. They're not all over each other. Like, two yeah. boys, and then he's got three very girly girls. Like my my kids couldn't care less about. They did loads of shows and they sing, and they're you know like if I said to Dylan, "Do you want to come and support?" You know, Caleb. No. <laughs> what are you kidding? No. And then the same like they you know the boys playing basketball or soccer or whatever. Hannah's a bit better, like she'll, you know, go between. Um, but they all, they get on well in that nice, it's not overkill. Like, good, that anybody's annoying anybody. They're, hey, how's it going? You know, move on with that's your like life. That's like sort of the dream. Yeah, 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 that's great. Exactly. That's awesome. Well, now I'll ask what I wanted to ask, because you sort of brought it up. So okay. you have three kids. Uh, I obviously know Hannah from, from being in the theater. Yeah. She took Katie's classes and all that. Um, I said to you before, I was like, oh my God, at least one out of three kids like took up your passion and you were like in public <laughs> it's the truth what does that mean what it's you know like with me when i was can i talk about me for a minute <laughs> I, I think we're at like Too 37 great. minutes of you talking about yourself but yeah go when, ahead yeah um, no, please talk about yourself when i did drama in in ireland um and i was really really into it i mean i went to a drama school i went to you know uh set up a theater uh company with Andrew Scott, you know, the yes. hot priest. Yes. Um, well, you, you, did, you, did you tour as, as Nancy and Oliver? I know you No, did. but I did do a you production of it. Yeah. 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 Um, but we set up our own theatre company. Um, I taught drama, like I go, gave up a job to go teach drama. I, you know, I was really, really into it. And what I did, there's a big thing in Ireland, you do the fesh, which is like, you, you act in, you do like maybe a solo drama or a, a, a duologue. Mm. And you, it's medals and prizes and be a first prize. People oh. from all over Ireland come and do this. So this was a huge part of my life as a as a kid. Loved it. Um, ne I used to never tell my parents when I was doing. Like I, I was put in for like the the ultimate competition was the prize winners cup kind of a thing. And if you wanted, you were never allowed to do the fetch again because we're too good kind of thing. And I remember the night I was doing. Never even tell my parents I was doing. I won the cup. And remember, so you were never allowed to do it. Again. Never. <laughs> Devastated. What will I do? My you're my too good of an actor. I was. You're too <laughs> talented. Is what you just told me. <laughs> Seriously, though. <that laughs> no, the fact that I never even told my poor mother. That's who, so funny. Like, for years, was paying for me to go to all these drama. She's like, well, you know, why were it? 
And I'm like, I, this is just my thing. I mean, it's for me. Yeah. yeah. I, I said, I, I don't need that. a big audience. I don't, I just wanted to, do, I like yeah. doing it. I like my Saturday drama class. Didn't need to, um, you know, be getting accolades from the family or an audience around me. It was just like, I like what I'm doing. And then when Hannah sort of started to do the class, and I always felt it was such a good outfit. Like, I love it for, for kids to, not even just doing a, a show. I, I really, it's, I've tried numerous a, times to get drama classes up and running here and they always fall flat on their faces. Know. Like just improv, mime and confidence building and all that. So I really wanted that for Hannah and sent her to, took a long time for her to find, yeah. you know, the right Yeah, well, well we, can, we, can, we can call it out. I mean, neither of us have done anything there in a while with the American yeah. Theatre Center for yeah. the Arts, which was the stage, which, yeah. you know, you and I met through the most beloved man in the world, yes. Tony Georgian, yeah. who was the, the founder and, and married Katie and I, of course, I mean, forever. Yeah. Um, but that's how I know you, yes. you know. So she found her little slice of heaven there. Yes. Yeah. Um, and loved, loved Katie. I mean, that was like a total turn. Because you can go like this, you know, depending on yeah. who the teacher is. Um, so I thought, oh, great, yeah, Hannah's going to follow in. And then I remember her just saying, because she connected the Calhoun program. You remember they did the yeah, sure. tour and about a year into it. She didn't like it. No, she was like, this is not for me. I'm like, really? I said, okay. And she said, does that upset you? I'm like, honestly, it doesn't. Should I don't mind doing a few shows here and there. I like that. And I like friends. And she said, I really don't like all the, the nonsense. <laughs> there, like, there is a lot of nonsense. Yeah, sure. I'm yeah. trying to get your hours and painting and all that. And people say, well, you know, we've been here since six o'clock in the morning and you're showing oh. up after your lacrosse game. Or, um, so she loved doing just a few little shows. But then Dylan, <laughs> the younger one, you know, the lead in fifth grade, blah, 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 and t he's the total showman. So funny. Total show, but again, wouldn't have the desire. But I'm sort of happy about that because I, I hated having the bug. I hated that sense of, oh my God, I really want to do this and I can't, and it's there's so many things holding me back. And it's I, a weird I, bug to have. It's it's it can be yeah, it can be so destroying. Well, you asked me, you were like, what's what are you doing this for? What what is this all about? Yeah. Like, it's literally because I'm like I I, have, I need I'm like itching to do a show. Yeah. I need to do something. It's, it's that whole you know, performance. You're, I, thing. Idle yeah. hands, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I get it. It's it's a really shitty bug yeah. to have, uh, a very creative and passionate bug to yeah. have, but sort of a shitty bug to have. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start to wrap us up. Not really. Unless you have well, somewhere to be. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Just help you're at my house. So uh, there's no. nothing going on here that she needs to do. <laughs> She's right. Um, <laughs> well, we can talk more shit off. Okay. Camera, so right, that's fair right. That's yeah. fair enough. Yeah. You said you're like I have stories I can't tell you now. I know I do. So. Can't wait. Oh, great. Um, I have one final question. Yes. What is something um, that you wish you knew before becoming a mom that you know now? Um, you never stop worrying about it. It wouldn't change me, you know, doing, obviously, I would never go back and say, well, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have become a mom. But it's, it, it's, it, they do go through you know hills and valleys and you yeah. you know like the, the kid that you're like oh my god you know like my gorgeous big eyed you know long lashed is being an absolute bastard yeah and then they regroup and tell you you know two years later and write you letters and thank you for being the best mom in the world like i wish i prepared myself that that you know you might kind of lose them a little bit not that you lose them but that you don't have control over you, you know you need to do this you need and that yeah. it's okay, like that they're fine themselves. I wish I was a little bit more. I think maybe as a single parent, that was very hard for me too, because I'm like, am I, am I feeling? Am I, you know, you know, and like bounce it off of. Yeah. Yeah. But they come back. I wish I'd, I'd known that, so I didn't worry myself as much. You just keep doing what you're doing, and they do, they do pick it up, and they'll come back to you. And that, and you never stop worrying. You never stop worrying. You never yeah. do. The bigger the kid, the bigger the. More money, more problems, right? Yeah. You, you just <laughs> as, never stop. As they say. Yes. As they say. And when you do stop, then you know will be you <laughs> you know what I mean like are you ever gonna stop worrying about them no it's fine no 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 I, I think there's yeah. something new wrong with Lily every day yeah so they, and that won't stop and it's all good it's so they bring out the good and the bad in you and that's that's a yeah. lovely thing to find you know that's a that's a very nice answer okay well thank you for for being here as you've Thanks mentioned we have me. nothing better to do I'm gonna wrap us up so we okay. can talk a bunch of shit all right uh, thank you guys <laughs> for tuning into shit moms won't say uh, you can find us on all kinds of social media on Facebook you can find us at moms won't say on Instagram, YouTube, and SoundCloud for all of you preferred listeners out there. You can find us at Shit Moms Won't Say, and I will tag it at the end of this episode. Thank you so much, and have a great night.